The Black Studies program at Cleveland State University welcomes you to this season of Images, a public affairs radio forum dedicated to open dialogue on a variety of diverse topics of interest and issues of concern, which focus on the life and experiences of African Americans and all peoples of African descent. By visiting our website at www.csuohio.edu slash black studies or calling 216-687-3655, you can learn more about upcoming black studies program events and activities. Now, here is your host for Images. And welcome to Images. I'm Prester Pickett, your host for this broadcast of Images, which is making history in that we are also having a video recording uh, to share around the world by way of the Internet. So, again, uh, we now have this chance to introduce you to the special guests who are making this history with us, the members and representatives of the Cleveland Association of Black storytellers and they have a very special way of introducing themselves oh i know i've been changed oh i know i've been changed oh i know i've been changed Black storytellers done called my name. Oh, I know I've been changed. Oh, I know I've been changed. Oh, I know I've been changed. Black storytellers done called my name. And the names of these individuals joining us today in the studio uh, include the president, current president of the Cleveland Association of Black Storytellers. That is Michelle Rudolph. Once again, welcome to Images, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We also have President Emeritus Oluremi Oliver. Uh, Mother Oluremi, once again, to you, welcome back well, to Images. Glad to be here. Our conversation is annual now in uh, the celebration that we have through the storytellers in acknowledging your founding, co-founding member, Mary Carter Smith. Mm -hmm. Can you introduce to our listening audience uh, a little bit about her history and walk us through why you've decided to have these great annual celebrations of her memory and legacy. Yes, absolutely. Um, we are here today to celebrate Mother Mary Carter Smith's 100th birthday. On February 10th, which is this Sunday, she would have turned 100 years old. She is our esteemed ancestor and co-founder of the National Association of Black Storytellers, which is the authentic black voice of storytelling. Throughout this weekend, affiliate associates throughout the uh, country and members of the National Association of Black Storytellers will also be celebrating Mother Mary Carter Smith's 100th birthday. So again, just uh, uh, sharing, uh, this is a national celebration. It isn't something that you've decided to do here in Cleveland. Oh, no. No. This all right. is uh, all the affiliates during this weekend will be celebrating her, her birthday and the rest of the activities and what's going on across the nation that we are celebrating right here in Cleveland, Ohio, include? Well, this week, this um, the radio show is one of the uh, celebrations because we're got, we're telling people and uh, teaching people who Mother Mary Carter Smith is. So, the other celebration will be this Sunday. Uh, February 10th, which, her, which is her actual birthday, we're going to be at the Maple Heights Library, 2 o'clock to 4.30, and it's a uh, tribute to uh, Mother Carter Mary Smith's 100th birthday, and it's called Lighting, 100 Years of Lighting the Way. So a centennial celebration. That's right. Yes. What is it with the history of the storytellers in Cleveland in terms of when the organization became active here in Cleveland. We do know that uh, one of your past presidents is Kwanzaa Brewer, a proud alumna 
of Cleveland State University. And uh, she engages with all of your efforts and other uh, presidents and members engage our Cleveland State University community. And we've had a conversation with Dr. Thomas Bynum, the director of Black Studies, to think that we're moving forward to a large celebration here at Cleveland State University. So with uh, uh, more discussion about uh, what you plan to do to engage our Cleveland State University community uh, in the future, possibly in September, and uh, other ways that you get your expressions out beyond this annual celebration of Mary Carter Smith. Well, first let me say uh, that as part of this 100-year celebration, we're actually calling her name out every day. Okay. And uh, throughout the year, whatever we are doing, any performance, any presentation, any radio show, uh, we will be talking about Mother Mary Carter Smith. And she is an ancestor, so she's passed on, she's made her transition, mm -hmm. and still has this presence with us. Mm -hmm. There is another co-founder, Linda Goss. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about uh, some of her efforts and uh, share possibly uh, the interest in uh, sharing information by way of a video recording uh, where there was an interview uh, conducted by one of your members to gather information from her about the legacy of the organization, the National Association of Black Storytellers. Now, um, a few years ago, uh, the National Association, NABS as we call it, uh, did put out a video that featured four of the preeminent storytellers in our uh, actually in our in our uh, our organizational history mm -hmm. and one of them of course was Mother Mary Carter Smith and the other was uh, another preeminent uh, featured person was Mama Linda Goss who as you said were co-founders of the national organization now our organization the CABS, affiliate of NABS, uh, was founded in 1995. Um, uh, and, our, and we have our local co-founders, which is um, Barbara Eady, um, Wanda Owens, and Lucinda Stevens. So those are our co-founders for our affiliate. Mm -hmm. So in 1995, um, they um, we became officially affiliate of the National Association mm -hmm. of Black Storytellers through the um, hard work of our co-founders, our three co-founders. Okay. Uh, some of your activities, can you enlighten us on how you operate when you engage the public? Uh, what do you do? What is this process of storytelling, this uh, carrying of oral traditions that extend, as Linda Goss shared uh, in the recording that I saw, uh, connects us back to Africa, the mother of us all? Well, uh, for the most part, most of our presentations are oral storytelling set of uh, you know programs and so we reflect back on our history as as the griot uh, pr providing oral history you know or oral uh, transmission of culture uh, the stories that were used to teach and uh, and to entertain uh, so that's that's our main focus however we do we use other storytelling arts in our uh, storytelling as well. So mm -hmm. we have an event coming up this month that will be at uh, the Breen Center. Uh, and that one is a, a, it's an oral, uh, it's a reading. Mm -hmm. And it's dedicated to Maya Angelou okay. in All Ways a Woman. And that's a public and we, we hope that our listening audience will consider calling the Black Studies Program at 216-687-3656 mm -hmm. to find out more information about that, or they could call 216-687-3655 to find out more about that, and we'll direct them to that. Good. Meanwhile, we'll take a moment to have a break to receive some messages from Cleveland State University. 
Established in 1969, the Black Studies program at Cleveland State University is currently comprised of five academic components, as well as the Jazz Heritage Orchestra, which contribute to the program's mission to promote knowledge and understanding to be shared with all generations and cultures concerning the rich legacy of the African diaspora. There is the academic program, an interdisciplinary curriculum of nearly 80 courses offering a major and minor in black studies. The Howard A. Mims African American Cultural Center is open to the public and features art exhibitions, Kumba Arts presentations by various performing artists, a Curtis Wilson lecture series, panel discussions, and Umoja roundtables. The Ralph Pruitt Lecture, Art and Media Series brings international and national speakers, artists, and films to the campus. Images, a half-hour public affairs radio broadcast interviews guests from many fields of endeavor. The fifth component is the Black Aspirations Celebration, a week-long event of culture, arts, and contemporary issues. The Jazz Heritage Orchestra is a 17-piece orchestra comprised of musicians who are educators. The orchestra is a long-standing affiliate of the Black Studies program. The Jazz Heritage Orchestra is dedicated to preserving and perpetuating the musical heritage of the great African-American jazz masters. They are available for performance engagements. Dr. Thomas Bynum is the director of the Black Studies program. Prester Pickett is the coordinator of the African-American Cultural Center. Dennis Reynolds is the artistic director of the Jazz Heritage Orchestra and I'm Louis Abdulwali, the second student to graduate from Cleveland State University with a major in Black Studies from the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences. And welcome back to Images. I'm Prester Pickett, your host for this broadcast of Images, which again is making history with a video recording that will be posted on YouTube and shared around the world for people to see our guests as well as to listen to them. Our very special guests today include Michelle Rudolph, who is the current president of CABS, that is the Cleveland Association of Black Storytellers. This is a part of a national organization, the National Association of Black Storytellers, and an individual who has guided CABS prior to the discussions of uh, Ms. Rudolph as president joining us, uh, and Kwanzaa Brewer being a president of the organization, is Mother Oluremi Oliver. She is a president emeritus for the organization. We left talking about this uh, valued history of Mary Carter Smith. She is a co-founder of the National Association of Black Storytellers. And there's more information about her history. And that's why there is this long celebration because there's so much to remember about her. So if you'll continue to enlighten our audience audience uh, on more of her history and those who are just joining us you get a chance to hear why the Cleveland Association of Black Storytellers is participating in festivals across the nation that extend around the world to recall an establishment of this organization and the legacy of Mary Carter Smith. Ms. Yes. Rudolph. Yes exactly. Um, Mary Carter Smith left a great legacy that we are continuing. And she was a storyteller, visionary. She was a poet. She was a teacher, author. She was a radio and television host. Um, our mother and a historian as well. So it's very appropriate for us to have radio yes. and TV uh, <laughs> video recordings Perfect. in this celebration Perfect. of her. Perfect. Yes. Absolutely. Our mother Grio is known nationally for um, for promoting storytelling as an art form uh, in the African oral tradition. And it's, um, it's interesting that you said the Cleveland Association of Black Storytelling, because that's the way we do it. We, we emphasize that black, because there's many stories and there's many storytellers, and we want you know make sure that everyone knows where we're, our perspective and where what kind of stories we're going to tell. And that uh, uh, understanding of the usage of the word black extends the conversation uh, beyond uh, African Americans. It includes Africans on the continent and Africans in the diaspora who are spread around the world. So Absolutely. a global discussion with black. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Continuing our discussion about her history. Um, she established um, as co-founder of NAMP, she established a formal organization that is dedicated to collectively and intentionally preserve stories, folklores, fables of Africans, 
their descendants and ancestors. So yes, it's a global. It's globally for Black people. Mm -hmm. we're, we're recognizing and we're honoring their stories and their lives. And it and storytelling depicts the way of life, uh, the fables and the folk folklores that we tell. And this will allow us to invite all of our students to see this rich culture, this rich tradition that, uh, as I recalled, our ancestor of Dr. Howard A. Mims yes. deserving Absolutely. to be shared with all cultures and all generations. Uh, further uh, in your celebrations involve the art of storytelling and as we open this show, the implementation of songs that carry the stories. I've had a chance to on yesterday fellowship with uh, Mother Oluremi and we were able to see some of this tradition uh, in the video recording that's part of your archives now. And uh, with that, uh, the discussion that came from Mary Carter Smith was in regard to uh, her excitement and gratitude as she shared in seeing what happens at the festival that's in regard to the national gathering but there are some particular things happening in Cleveland in regard to the celebration of the festival can you share that mother Oluremi uh, I can but can I go back a sure. little bit because sure. what I want to share is that uh, I want to share first of all why the festival came about okay please in the first place uh, why the national festival came about okay because uh, uh, well if she were alive today uh, she would always tell us that uh, I love all people mm -hmm. and I love us most because I am us and I will always love us I love our songs I love our poems our rhymes I love our cooking I love our philosophy <laughs> and as she would also say she would share this poem that she often did and uh, it kind of expresses in a quick way <laughs> her love of b the black folk uh, lore experience. And she says, Afro's natural's cornrows too. Real big, little wig, fried hair, dyed hair, big, bad, and bald. Africa is the mother of us all. We could not choose our birth color. We do choose our heart color to be black and proud, say it clear and loud. We are one people, us. Afros, naturals, cornrows too. <laughs> Real big, little wig, fried hair, dyed hair, big, bad, and bald. <laughs> Africa is the mother of us all. So, so that's an implementation of poetry now, so we have the lyrical expressions, joining rhythms and making music, and then hearing the rich stories of our people. Now, Mother Mary Carter Smith, as Michelle said, was a poet mm -hmm. <laughs> also. And uh, in 1982, she and Mama Linda attended a festival in uh, Tennessee. It was called the National Network Festival, mm -hmm. Storytelling Network which is a huge uh, gathering of storytellers. But when she got there, she realized there, there were only a few black people there. And she said, well, don't we have stories too? Of course we do. Mm -hmm. We come from a long tradition of storytelling. And so that very next year, they put on the very first festival in the tradition it's called. Now, and in, in the interest uh -huh. and connecting with black stud studies yes. here at Cleveland State University under the leadership of Dr. Thomas L. Bynum, uh, he's also implemented uh, a, a series of courses for the community to consider, uh, which are continuing education courses. Mm -hmm. So uh, these are courses that are afforded on a uh, basis of a shorter term of instruction mm -hmm. from many of our community members who are able to teach courses that celebrate that culinary art tradition, the cuisine of African descendants around the world. Uh, that is something that will be taught. We also have uh, an African dance course that will be taught through Black Studies and this continuing education curriculum 
and a history course as well as a Reiki course. Mm -hmm. And for those who want to find out more about that, they can visit the Black Studies website here at Cleveland State University, www.csuohio.edu slash class, C-L-A-S-S slash black, B-L-A-C-K hyphen studies slash black, B-L-A-C-K hyphen studies again. So uh, uh, with that, consider uh, seeing how you can connect to this legacy that is extended around the world, representing the interests of Mary Carter Smith and appreciate it here at Cleveland State University with our attention to diversity and our interest to celebrating this legacy that you're talking about with us today. Now, Mother Mary Curtis, well, let me say this, too, about the National Association of Black Storytellers, because it it, it does represent uh, African people from around the diaspora. Mm-hmm. So we have members who are from, from uh, various countries in Africa, and we have people from the Caribbean, uh, and we have people even from uh, parts of South America, uh, but still representing that diaspora. Um, also, let me say this is very important, that we are doing a conference in September in conjunction with Black Studies, and uh, this will be September the 21st, which is a Saturday, and from uh, 8.30 to 4 o'clock. And during 8:30 that, a.m. 8:30 a.m. to 4 to 4 p.m. p.m. Okay. Yes, right. And uh, we're going to have two uh, nationally, internationally known storytellers uh, presenting. Uh, we'll have workshops and uh, a panel discussion. And appropriately, uh, during this celebration of the 400 years of our. Uh, as African Americans being here in uh, America, uh, we'll focus our conference on uh, particularly women. It's called uh, Voice and Vision. Mm-hmm. So we'll be talking about African American women, voice, vision, storytelling. And that's going to be free and open to the public. Uh, The entire community will be able to come out to that. With that uh, as well, that is going to be accomplished because of a grant that you all received. Can you talk about that and allow us to celebrate and applaud you (laughs) for uh, uh, advancing to receive that grant? Please share. Yes, thank you. Um, Yes, uh, Cleveland Association of Black Storytellers was awarded uh, a grant to um, put this conference on, this storytelling conference that we plan to have September 21st, right here at the wonderful Cleveland State University. Um, and was, it's from Cuyahoga Arts and Culture. Okay. Uh, who, who awarded us the grant. Um, and we're very pleased to um, be able to share storytelling to some people who may not have heard storytelling and um, they would be introduced to storytelling, but those who are in the arts may be able to use storytelling as a in their profession, in their art form. So we're going to have some professional people uh, conducting workshops to show them how to do that. And we're going to have uh, some storytelling so they can see how it's done on a, you know, a professional level. And we're going to have a panel discussion as well. So and, it's, it's going to be a great day in storytelling. And uh, we on yesterday also uh, were able to fellowship with uh, Dr. Adrian Gosselin of our English department. So mm-hmm. those uh, written Uh, expressions, the literature as well is celebrated and also connects as uh, we understand the uh, celebration of Mary Carter Smith and her status as an author. Uh, So with that, again, it is a full circle connection in the conversations of what is being accomplished by the Cleveland Association of Black Stories as well as what is being accomplished around the United States and around the world by way of the national Association of Black Storytellers. How do you all engage the youth? There is this next generation that needs to inherit these oral traditions that uh, is sometimes criticized for not being attentive to their mothers and grandmothers and grandfathers and older uncles. So uh, how do you extend this legacy to the next generation? 
Well, for one thing, and especially as it relates to the this Mother Mary Carter Smith uh, celebration, mm -hmm. we'll have youth at our uh, program on Sunday performing because Mother Mary Carter Smith <laughs> loved children. She promoted children. You know, she had children on her radio program, on her television programs, and that was a very important part of the our national uh, focus. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, when we do, uh, for example, we had Kwanzaa just recently, the national holiday celebration the national of Kwanzaa, right. and you you celebrated which principle? We uh, Kuj Kujishakalia, Kujishakalia yeah. self determination. Yeah. Right. Okay, and we we have children presenting, and also when we tell uh, stories to children, um, we engage, we try to engage the children in a way that they ca uh, we can get their attention. Sometimes the characters may be animated, they may be animals, or, um, and 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 focus, but we always have a, a lesson in there for them to take with them with our stories. And we, we consider ourselves teaching artists because we're teaching the children about different historical people in history, different lessons to be learned, different uh, parts of history. So we're, so it's a teaching method as well. And Mother Mary Carter Smith, she established as well to make sure it's a communication tool and a teaching method. Hence, there is the interdisciplinary interest that extends into our fields of education Absolutely. that are studied right here at Cleveland yeah, State exactly. University and employed through the Black Studies Program because we have engaged the Cleveland Association <laughs> of Black Storytellers uh, with the excitement uh, that is, is moving forward in the uh, type of uh, new ideas that are being shared. What uh, future uh, conversations, even beyond the festival, are considered that are possibly even just traditional things that an individual who decides they want to become a member uh, or join you uh, can look forward to? The future in a quick closing statement for the Cleveland Association of Black Storytellers. Um, we, we, we're, fo we, we're focusing on the future, and our future has to do with what's happening around us. Uh, so we're looking at things in the social, social justice. Um, like our next festival will be in Montgomery, Alabama, because of the um, the museum that is there that's just opened up there. So we're talking about um, looking in the past, but going forth in the future, and kind of like look um, tackling some of these issues uh, on all levels on a local level social justice education so that's a, that's our focus in the future educating and also uh, making sure that um, our we are engaged politically with our communities also we want to make sure that um, our the, the that people in our community know about black storytelling and the African oil tradition as an art form. And with that, it sounds like a summary with the expression of Sankofa that uh, the Cleveland Association of Black Storytellers are moving forward while they're looking back. And with that egg there, even considered in that symbol, uh, carrying the future with them on their way. We thank you for tuning in to Images and listening to this conversation that we've had with Michelle Rudolph, president of the Cleveland Association of Storytellers and also Oluremi Oliver. Thank you for tuning in to Images. You have been listening to Images, a public affairs radio program produced by the Cleveland State University Black Studies Program and this station. The opinions expressed were those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Cleveland State University, the Black Studies Program, or the station. We hope you have enjoyed the music performed by the Jazz Heritage Orchestra. If you are interested in finding out more about the Black Studies Program, call 216-687-3655 or visit our website at www.csuohio.edu slash blackstudies.